Welcome to the last part of the series on how to deploy Azure Data Platform with DevOps Pipeline. It's part nine and it's about DevOps self-hosted agent. If you're wondering why do we need to do this, then typically there are two reasons why you want to create a self-hosted agent. The first one is you want full control, meaning you want to have full flexibility over the compute service that is doing the deployment of the Azure services. And that could be because there's a need for your project or your client to actually own the infrastructure or regulation, or there could be any, any other reasons why you want or your client wants the full control over the compute of the DevOps agent itself. When I say compute, I mean the agent, it's the same thing. The second reason is access. So as of today, the Microsoft hosted agent that we've been using is actually not recognized as a trusted Microsoft service, which is a bit bonkers, but uh, it is what it is. And if you have deployed an Azure Data Platform in a tightly secured uh, environment from network perspective, Microsoft hosted agent is not gonna be allowed to enter that environment. And that's why you need to have a self-hosted agent and kind of give the network access just for that agent so it can do the deployment. So that's the reason why. All right, now let's move on to actually what we're going to do in this demo. There are really just five things that we need to do to create a self-hosted agent. There could be more if you actually need to install additional software or so modules in your self-hosted agent but literally for this demo i'm just going to cover this uh, we'll need to create a new vm a virtual machine we will have to install self-hosted agent on that vm and the next the last three is really about installing the softwares and modules necessary for the deployment. So we need to install Visual Studio build tool. So if you are deploying SSDT with SQL database, for example, you need this Visual Build, Visual Studio build tools. If you are using the AZ, AZ module, and I think in my data lake deployment, I use AZ CLI module, we need the fourth one here, the AZ uh, um, module installation. And the last one track job is actually for Databricks deployment. So if you want to follow along the whole nine parts or eight parts of this series, then you do need to do this. Uh, but you probably need to do more if you have other things that you want to use. Before we create a VM, let me just go to Azure DevOps just to show you around first what and where we set up this agent. First, let's go to Azure DevOps itself. This is my project. And the first thing I'm gonna go is the project setting in the bottom left here. Now, if I go to agent pools, I have this by default Azure pipelines and this default Azure pipelines. I'm gonna create my own agent. So I'm gonna want, I wanna have my own pool. Now pool is essentially a bunch of servers or a bunch of computes here. So I'm just gonna create a new pool just going to click self-hosted here because it's a self-hosted agent. Let's say my pool one. Let's say just my pool here. All right. And I'm happy to grant permission to all pipelines create. All right. So within here, we're going to create a new agent. And what that means is we need to spin up a new virtual machine and we need to do this steps. And to do that, let's head to Azure Portal. All right, we are in Azure Portal now, and I'm going to create my VM. I'm going to use this resource group that I already have, Learn DevOps Prereq, and I'm just going to create a new virtual machine. Virtual machine. There we go. Create. All 
I will just stick with it. The um, DevOps agent one, and I'll just pick UK South. I'm just gonna keep everything basic, no no high availability. A simple, I think this would do. Username, password. I would just use admin. You know, have something like this. You know. All right, allow selected ports. I'm just gonna allow for public access for demo purposes. Uh, just follow this along. This is uh, recommended for testing. Just pick for this. I'll pick a standard SSD because it's a little bit quicker and I'll go to networking. Yep, I think I'm happy with that. Basic, public. And that's fine. I will just disable my diagnostics, enable shutdown. I'm just going to keep everything very simple. All right, and I'm going to create a VM. Great, and now I'm just going to skip through this part. VM is done. Now that I have my VM built, this is my resource group again, and this is my VM. So I'm just going to click on that, and I'm going to connect to it with my with RDP. So I will download that one. There we go, and I'm just going to open it. Neck. And I will just log in here with my details. All right, if you have all this notification, just click yes, and then you will allow you to enter into your VM. This is my VM. All right, once I'm inside the VM, first thing I'm going to do, I want to make sure that I turn off the IE enhanced security configuration here just so that I can browse something, otherwise it will be blocked. And the first thing that I'm, I'm going to do, which I've actually done, is download Microsoft Edge. So if you haven't, if you want to follow along, please just download Microsoft Edge or Chrome, whichever browser that you want, because Internet Explorer is just not good for browsing DevOps and Azure. And I have done that here. So I have downloaded my Microsoft Edge. Next, I'm going to go to Azure DevOps, my organization. Please use yours as you see fit. I've logged in before. That's why I didn't have to log in again. But if you haven't, they will ask you to log in and just log in with your normal credentials. And I'm in my project. Go to project setting, agent pools, my pool. And I'm going to click new agent. First, uh, I'm going to download this and I'm obviously using Windows. Follow the other OS if you use a different one. Click download. All right, now this is downloaded. And the first thing that you want to do is you want to open uh, PowerShell. Just click PowerShell and 
I'm just gonna follow along this guide really because this is literally I need to uh, go back to my root C, create a new agent, the agent folder. There, I'm just gonna do this step. This is essentially installing the agent. Now let's start to configure this agent. The first thing I'm gonna do is I will let me just clear um, part config.cmd, which follows this one here. If you want to follow the uh, more detailed instructions, instead of just following this, you can actually click that and then you can see the full documentation here. As you can tell, there's already some details here that you can easily follow. Right, now let's do that and config. The server URL is the DevOps uh, URL here until the organization. And I'm going to use PAT or personal access token, which I'm going to get from here. And I'll just click a new token, learn DevOps, and I'll just allow for full access. You don't have to, but just for demo, I'm just going to do that. And I'll paste that here. I'm just going to enter the agent pool, which is my pool, or is it? Okay. Yep, it is my pool. And then just type name of the agent. I'm happy with the, the default suggested name, so I'll just click enter. Just use the enter run agent as a service. Uh, yes. Yes, I just use the default. Enter to prevent. Da, da, da. Uh, nope. And now this should be configured successfully. So if I just search services. In here, if I just scroll that, I should be able to see. There you go. As your pipeline agent, blah 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 blah, and this should follow whichever you have and how you configure it. And this is now is running. And if you go back to the DevOps agent, and if we just refresh this, click agent there you go we have now an agent that is online the last few things that you want to install is as as your visual studio build tools you can find this in this uh, documentation on self-hosted windows agent this visual studio build tools is required for sql database with ssdt deployment azure azure az PowerShell module and also thread job. This is the last version 2.0 module. And you can install this with PowerShell. Okay, just in your PowerShell window. Just like what I'm doing right now. And before I end this video, I want to show you that you can actually change your DevOps agent in your code, let's say in your DevOps pipeline here. So instead of using Windows letters, you have to replace this now with your agent pool name. So in my case, it's my pool. And this is how you can then use your own agent instead of Microsoft hosted agent. That's the end of part nine video on 
setting up DevOps self-hosted agent, and also wrapping up the whole series on deploying Azure Data Platform with DevOps pipeline. I hope you find any of these videos useful. And if you do, press that like button. And if you do like my channel and appreciate some of my videos so far, appreciate you if you can subscribe that button. That's it for today. Thanks a lot. I'll see you next time.